Welcome to a fee way excellence without stress. Welcome, guys, to a fee way excellence without stress. I'm his favor, your use of English teacher, and I am happy to be here. If we can say news, why can't we say information? Now, first of all, you have to understand that when we're saying news, news is not in plural form. So the presence of an S at the back of new does not make this word you know news means information it does not make it plural so the word is singular but originally it bears an s so you have to note that both news and information they are uncountable nouns and uncountable nouns cannot be used in plural forms so this will take us to our topic for today today we're looking at nouns nouns i know that the noun sounds very familiar i mean we already know it's a part of speech so in this lesson we're going to look at we we'll define nouns we we'll look at classes of nouns and we'll answer questions on nouns so let's get right into it what are nouns the traditional definition everyone knows is that a noun is the name of a person animal place or thing noun this is correct but this definition has a shortcoming because nouns also name qualities so simply we could just say that nouns are naming words so they can name people places things or quality yes so we'll get to this quality part when we start look looking at classes of nouns so the first class of noun concrete and abstract nouns from the word concrete, we already know that we're referring to something that, when we say something is concrete, it means it can be seen, it can be touched. So it's a material object. While abstract nouns are nouns that we cannot see or touch. So abstract nouns describe qualities, concrete nouns describe nouns that we can see. For example, I can see cup. So cup is a concrete noun. Yes, but abstract noun, quality. I can't see kindness, I can't see patience, I can't see beauty, but they are also nouns. Now, it's important to note that concrete nouns, they accept both singular and plural forms. So we could have cup and cups. We could have bottle and bottles. But abstract nouns are only used in singular forms. So we can't have patiences. We can't have kindnesses. We just have patience. Abstract nouns do not also accept indefinite articles. Indefinite articles, article A or an. So we can have a patience. We can have an patience. We can have a beauty. But concrete nouns accept indefinite and definite articles. Now we also have countable and uncountable nouns. Simply, countable nouns can be counted or numbered while uncountable nouns cannot be counted so first of all let's look closely at countable nouns now uncountable nouns when they are in their singular forms that's when they are when it's one that we're referring to they occur with indefinite articles so when we're referring to one noun like apple it can occur with indefinite articles a or an so an apple is in the fridge but if it's plural, we can say an apples are in the fridge. So countable nouns occur with definite articles. When they use definite articles, they can use it both in singular and plural forms. So that we could have the apple is in the fridge. That's one apple. And we could also have the apples are in the fridge. So when definite articles are involved... When a definite article is involved, we can have we can have the nouns in both singular and plural forms. For non-countable nouns, it's important to know that non-countable nouns can be measured. Yes, they can. We can use some units of measurement, like a piece of information. So it can be measured. But it's important to note that non-countable nouns, they do not take indefinite articles. And we cannot use them in plural forms. 
So we can have furnitures. We can have informations because they are non-countable nouns and they do not take plural forms. So they also do not take indefinite articles. So we can have a furniture. We can have an furniture. But these non-countable nouns, they can be modifi modified by the definite article the. So we can say the news has spread. The furniture is in the warehouse. Now let's look at proper nouns. Proper nouns are specific in nature. Now proper nouns name a particular person, place or thing. And proper nouns, regardless of where they occur in a sentence, they are capitalized. So we have examples here with now. We have French. We have Paul. We have Africa, Canada, Enugu. A co bridge, civil service commission, Friday, July, and so on. So, proper nouns, they must be capitalized. Kemi traveled to Lagos for a conference. Kemi is a proper noun, a name of a particular person. Lagos is a proper noun, a name of a place, a particular place. So, it has to be capitalized. Proper nouns do not take indefinite articles. So, we can't find a or an. So, we can't have a Paul. A Lagos and Lagos. No, that's incorrect. Proper nouns do not also accept plural markers. Except when they are used with the article, definite article the. So we can have Paul's. We can have Richard. But we can have the Richard are traveling to Canada tomorrow. By the Richards, we mean that the family of Richards, they are traveling to Canada tomorrow. We have common nouns as opposed to proper nouns. Common nouns are general. They do not point to a particular person, place, or thing. Proper nouns refer to the name of a class, a class of persons, places, or things. And they are often pluralized. Examples of common nouns. We have animals. Animal, animals. Girl or girls. Boy, boys. Child, children, man, men, woman, women, and so on. Now, note that common nouns can be used with both definite and indefinite articles. So, so that we can have the cap is on the table. So, when I'm saying the cap, that means that whoever I'm referring to already has an idea, has a prayer information of the cap. So, I'm saying the cap is on the table. We could also have a cap is on the table. The orange is in the kitchen. An orange is in the kitchen. So common nouns can be used with both definite and indefinite articles. Collective nouns simply refer to nouns that stand for a group. So when we're dealing with a group of persons that are considered to be a unit, that is what we call collective noun. A group of persons or things considered to be a unit or one. Examples, we have family, we have crowd, we have army, we have herd. We have police, we have government, we have choir, we have flock, staff, and so on. It's important to note that some collective nouns are only used in the plural. Like, we have police. Police cannot be used in the singular. It is a plural noun. There are some that are only used in the singular. That is crowd. While there are some collective nouns that accept both singular and plural forms. Now, when a singular verb is used with a collective noun, it means that the whole items that make up the unit are considered as one. So, when we say the staff is required to fill the form, so we are considering the, the staff as one. But when we use a plural verb with a collective noun, it means that we are looking at, instead of looking at the group as one, we are now looking at them individually. So when we say all staff are required to fill the form, we are, we are looking at them individually, not as one. So let's quickly move to our questions. My shoes are worn out. I must see my dash. A. Crosser. B. Tana. C. Cobbler. D. Hosea. The correct option is option C. Cobbler is the person who repairs shoes. His looks pertain that dash would be unpleasant. A. Some news. B. A new. C. News. D. The news. 
the correct option is option D. His looks pretend that the news would be unpleasant. The news. Remember that when we are referring to uncountable nouns, they can go with the definite article D. There are several dash in the farmyard. A lamb, B sheep, C E, D goat. The correct option is option B. There are several sheep in the farmyard. The new school is not provided with dash, A, an equipment, B, enough equipment, C, equipment, D enough equipment now remember that equipment is an uncountable noun and it cannot go with indefinite articles and it cannot be used in the plural form so the correct option is option b the new school is not provided with enough equipment the doctor listened to my heartbeat with a dash a cardiograph b stethoscope c chronometer D microscope the correct option is option B stethoscope that's what doctors use to listen to heartbeats the next question he decided to wait he decided to wait for the birds because he had dash a many luggages B plenty luggages C a lot of luggage D too many luggages the correct option is option C a lot of luggage and that is because we can't use too many because many precede countable noun and luggage is not a countable noun luggage is uncountable so we cannot even use it in the plural form after too much exercise some people suffer from cramp which is caused by the dash of the muscles a contraction B restriction, C conscription, D relaxation. The correct option here is A. Muscles contract. Our neighbor was attracted by the dash. Now attracted by the dash of the food. A flavor, B stench. C scent D aroma. The correct option is D aroma. Whenever we're referring to food, the correct option is aroma. Cooking has has never been Jimoke's dash. A recital. B purview. C style. D fort. The correct option is option D. Fort means strength. The final question: This dash must have dash. The World Bank of officials. A analysis and attract b analysis and attracted c analysis which is in the singular form and attract d analysis in the singular form and attracted the correct option is option b now we already have these so these is in it's already in plural form that means that the, um, the noun that must follow must be in plural form so these analyses must have attracted so the past tense must have attracted the world bank of officials now this will bring us to the end of our lesson on nouns welcome to a fee way excellence without stress welcome guys to a free way excellence without stress i am miss favor your use of english teacher and i am happy to be here knock 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 who is at the door it is me no emeka i won't open my door except you say the correct thing now i'm saying it is i who am at the door I know that sounds funny but that is the correct thing to say so come along with me as i teach you on pronouns and how to use them properly pronouns for this lesson we'll look at this content firstly meaning of pronoun types of pronoun rules guiding the use of pronoun and questions and answers on pronouns let's get right into it meaning of pronoun 
what is pronoun a pronoun is simply a word that is used in place of a noun in a sentence that means that what pronoun does mainly is to reduce the repetition of nouns for example instead of a passage to keep on re repeating the name for example emeka emeka came to school on monday emeka went home by five o'clock p.m emeka visited my house afterwards emeka did this emeka did that we use pronoun so we use emeka in the first sentence and in the subsequent sentences you find us using he and everyone who sees that he knows that we are referring to emeka so we use pronoun in place of a noun in a sentence examples of the common pronouns we have he she i your are and so on let's look at types of pronoun there are so many types of pronouns in english language firstly let's look at the possessive pronouns from the word possessive it already suggests ownership suggests possession so possessive pronouns are used to indicate ownership or possession for example mine yours theirs wants it's ours the car is mine there's a rule for using possessive pronouns but i will tell you that when we get to the next slide so for now just stay with me as we learn what these types of pronouns are and the examples we also have demonstrative pronouns demonstrative pronouns are used when we are pointing to specific things they act majorly as pointers examples we have these for singular we have these for plural we have that and those this is my bag this is pointing to that thing pointing to my bag the bag i own this is my bag we also have interrogative pronouns the word interrogative already suggests that we use these kinds of pronouns to ask questions. For example, we have what, we have who, we have which, we have whom, and we have why. We also have indefinite pronouns. These pronouns are not specific. They are used to refer to any part they are not used to refer to any particular person or thing for example we have anybody we have somebody we have nobody we have anything we have everything these pronouns now they are not referring to any particular person or thing and the pronouns which carry any are used in the negative form we also have the reciprocal pronouns reciprocal they are used to express mutual relationship examples we have each other and we have one another there's a rule for using this pronoun this pronouns but we'll get to that in the next slide we also have what we call the relative pronouns they are used to relate one part of the sentence to another we have whatever we have which we have whichever and we have when we also have reflexive pronouns these pronouns are used to refer back to the subject of the sentence that means that the doer of the action which is a subject is also the receiver of the action so the subject is also acting as the object we have examples like myself themselves itself yourself yourselves herself and himself so i bought the bag for myself i is the subject myself is also the receiver so the subject the the doer of the action is the also the receiver of the action i bought this bag for myself that's an example of reflexive pronouns then we also have personal pronouns now this type of pronoun it refers to the speaker 
and the people or the things that the speaker is referring to we have divisions of personal pronouns let's we can divide them majorly into two singular personal pronouns and plural personal pronouns singular personal pronouns refer to singular refers to one plural refers to more than one so let's look at singular personal pronouns they are also divided into three we have the first person we have the second person and the third person the first person refers to the person speaking and here we have i me the second person refers to the person that is spoken to you and the third person refers to the person that is spoken about she her he him it plural personal pronouns plural more than one the first pe person that's the person speaking when they're more than one it's no longer i but we us second person we have you third person we have they and them now this singular and plural personal pronouns are also divided into what we call the subject and object pronouns now subject pronouns they perform the action they are the performers of the action in a sentence why object pronouns receive action in a sentence let's look at the subject pronouns for the first person we have i and we for the second person we have you for the third person we have he she it and they and um for the object pronouns for the first person we have me and us for the second person we have you for the third person we have him her it one and we have them it's important to know the ones that are subject pronouns and the ones that are object pronouns because we do not use them interchangeably we will see that fully when we get to the rules that guide the use of pronoun so let's get right into the rules the first rule here states that subject pronouns cannot be used objectively in a sentence what that simply means is that this pronouns that we find here under the section of the subject pronoun we cannot use them as receivers of action of the action in a sentence they are strictly going to be used subjectively as performers of an action and not as receivers of an action let's look at this first example baba and dash participated in the tournament we have option a him option b his option c he option d he with an apostrophe and s the correct option here is option c baba and he participated in the tournament and why is that so it is because he is a subject pronoun baba and he is the subject of this sentence so we have to use he baba and he participated in the tournament we cannot use baba and him because him is an object pronoun so if you still say things like baba and him no it is baba and he based on the rule guiding the use of pronouns let's look at the second rule object pronouns cannot be used subjectively in a sentence that means that when you see object pronouns you make sure that you use them objectively they must act as receivers of action and not as performers of an action in a sentence let's look at these examples remember the matter is strictly between dash a between you and i b among you and i c among you and me d between you and me the correct option here is option d the remember the matter is strictly between you and me it is not you and i and that is because here we are dealing you and me is the object we are dealing with object and not the subject 
So remember the matter is strictly between you and me. And me is an object pronoun. We cannot use between you and I because I is a subject pronoun. Also, don't forget that you is both subject and object. That's in the second person. So that's why we don't have a problem with that you. You can function as both subject and object as we see here. Let's look at the second example. It was Dash who fought the civil war. A, they, B, them, C, those, and D, dears. The correct option is option B. We are dealing with objects. That means we need an object pronoun. It was them, not it was they. It was them who fought the civil war. Another rule is to use each other if those mentioned are two and one another when those mentioned are many. Now, remember the type of pronoun that we talked about. So, here, this is this type of pronoun, each other is a reciprocal pronoun number five each other and one another so you only use each other if you were referring to two people in a sentence and one another when there are many there are more than two there are many or we do not know the number now look at this example the head of state in his new year broadcast to the nation emphasized the need for nigerians to regard dash as members of the same family a themselves b one another c each other d yourselves the correct option is option b and that is because those mentioned are many the need for nigerians to regard one another let's look at example b jane and jara love dash very much a themselves b each other c one another d themselves Meanwhile, there's nothing like themselves in English language. So the correct option here is option B. Jane and Jarawa love each other. We're referring to two people. So if you still refer to two people, two persons with, if you still refer to two persons with one another, Jane and Jarawa love one another very much, it is incorrect. The correct thing to say when you're referring to two persons is Jane and Jarawa love each other very much let's look at the next rule it says use subject pronouns after the verb to be now look at verb to be we have is we have am we have was we have where we have been so you can't say this is him no we use subject pronouns after the verb him is an object pronoun so we say this is he that is why you can say it is me. Me is an object pronoun. What you say is it is I. Remember our first example when we began it is I who am at the door. This is the reason for that. Another rule is that subject pronouns are used after than an as in a sentence. Usually you find people saying she's taller than me. He is shorter than me. That is an incorrect statement. You say she is shorter than I am. You do not use object pronouns after than and as. You use subject pronouns. So next time when you want to say something like she's shorter in comparison you say she's shorter than i am that is the correct thing to say he is taller than i am not he is taller than me then the last rule we're going to look at is that object pronouns are used after like for example the church needs people like them so we can't say the church needs people like they no we say the church needs people like them so now let's answer these questions to test our knowledge on pronouns the first question 
the choir is singing dash is signing dash new song a there b eats c there's and d eats with an apostrophe and s the correct option is option b the choir is signing its new song and the reason is because possessive pronouns do not carry an apostrophe like we have in nouns so you can use an apostrophe in possessive pronouns and we also use it when we are referring to inanimate objects or things that we do not know the gender the choir is signing its new song the correct option is option b question two i can't mind the light i don't know dash about electricity option a something option b nothing option c anything option d nobody the correct option is option c anything i can't mind the light i don't know anything about electricity anything suggests negative any so i don't know anything about electricity question three it was dash who fought the civil war it was dash who fought the civil war option a there option b them option c those option d theirs the correct option is option b them it was them who fought the civil war and that is because it is we are to use an object pronoun we are referring to the object it was them who fought the civil war so remember that an object pronoun must be used objectively in a sentence question four those men helped dupe and dash a myself b i c me and d we the correct option is option c and it's we still have the same reason that we gave in question three those men helped dupe and me it is because we are referring to the object so we have to use an object pronoun dupe and me those men help dupe and me we can't say dupe and i because i is a subject pronoun and subject pronouns cannot be used objectively those men helped dupe and me question five dash are good friends a he and i b i and him c i and he d he and me the correct option is option a he and i are good friends and that is because we are referring to the subject and we must use a subject pronoun he and i we can't say he and me because me is an object pronoun and we cannot use it subjectively so we use he and i someone may ask why can't we say i and he since we just changed their positions curtsy demands that you put yourself last so that is why you can say you and i he and i she and i are not i and she the correct option is option a question six my wife and i met dash on a ship going to liberia let's look at that subject my wife and i we're referring to two people let's look at our options option a ourselves option b one another option c each other option d ourselves reciprocal reciprocal pronouns remember that we said we use each other when we're referring to two persons and use one another when we are referring to many so the correct option is option c my wife and i met each other on a ship going to liberia question seven the choice to go to the university or not is dash a yours with an apostrophe b your c yours d your an apostrophe and s the correct option is option c the choice to go to the university or not is yours 
this is a possessive pronoun and it does not carry an apostrophe question number eight the african extended family system gives security to dash members the african extended family system gives security to dash members a his b her c it d there the correct option is option c the gender is not specified so we use it and remember it's a possessive pronoun the african extended family gives security to its members question nine the wicked boy threw a stone at the bird smashing dash two legs a it b it with an apostrophe and s c it d is the correct option is option a the wicked boy threw a stone at the bird smashing its two legs possessive pronoun just like i said earlier do not carry an apostrophe and finally question 10 after we have taken our share we shall give that to them a there b there an apostrophe and s c there's and d there there the correct option is option c after we have taken our share we shall give theirs to them and that will bring us to the end of this lesson to practice more questions on pronouns and the correct usage of the various types of pronouns download a few way app and you would have access to practice as many questions as you can to help you with the use of pronouns thank you